everyone welcome back to my channel I am Ophelia Staten and today I just thought I would do a video with just some of my favorite art supplies um, I always find these videos interesting and to be honest I feel as though I have quite a bit of supplies uh, probably way more than is ever necessary and my goal this year is to work through a lot of these supplies I am doing hopefully a no buy for the entire year of 2018 because I just have so much that I want to work through so I just thought I'd share with you guys some of my favorite and most used art supplies and I'll start this video off with my sketchbooks so um, I of course have quite a few sketchbooks going and another goal is to kind of rein it all in where um, I don't have a variety of sketchbooks with like a few pages done in it and then a few pages done in this one I want to just focus on at least a couple of sketchbooks at the time um, this is just a notebook that I keep it's one of the artist survival books that I get at my local art supply store Jerry's Artorama that's usually where I get a lot of my supplies from um, but this just happens to be a um, just a regular notebook I guess if you will um, I like that it's got pockets and there's uh, pockets all throughout um, but there's clean paper there's lined paper and then there's like the dotted grid paper and I just honestly use this for a variety of things just keeping notes and such like that just rambling through if you will so this one I always keep in my book bag at school just to kind of jot things down and I really love to use that one as well as in my studio and what stays in my studio this is another one it's just a Dale Arrowney, um cache notebook and in case you can't tell I just love stickers on all of my notebooks but this guy is just a a notebook that I literally do a daily brain drain in and so every morning when I remember um, or if I have time I will just get up and um, just kind of write out my thoughts for the day and such like that but this one stays in my uh, studio I always find that I will color the pages sometimes ahead of time if I think about it just with watercolors but this stays in my studio is just like my brain drain or thoughts for the day and then I have um, another sketchbook and it literally is me and my stickers just a sketchbook um, I think this is probably a deal around me as well um, but this one just kind of houses a variety of things where I will do swatches of watercolors um, just trying to practice things um, trying out different materials to see which ones I like um, more swatches this is literally just my every single thing sketchbook with notes and ideas um, as well as finished pieces of artwork and I actually took these guys out of a uh, different sketchbook because I just didn't like the paper in it and I honestly don't even remember what type of what the name of the sketchbook was but I just knew that like the paper just wasn't my favorite so I ended up ditching the entire sketchbook but I took out these finished pages that I had to just incorporate into this sketchbook so that I could um, end up finishing it and on the very back page of my sketchbooks I usually will keep list of things that I need from the art supply store um, and I am almost done with this sketchbook so that I can start a new one and then I've got a couple of others that um, usually I will use a Strathmore um, I like this one the hardbound um, but that's I usually go between like the Strathmore or um, Dealer Rowney type sketchbooks or honestly any of the ones that I find but I usually find that I pick up the Strathmore visual journals a lot um, I'm in love with their new hardbound ones that I'm gonna try um, so I'm pretty excited to give some of those a try and then I found well here let's just do this one because it's these two are two newer ones um, 
the Stillman and Burn, of course, it's brand new because I have a slew of sketchbooks and I'll try to remember to put in, insert a photo of the sketchbooks that kind of await my play. Um, so I've got the Stillman and Burn sketchbook that um, it's a wire bound. This one is a mixed media one that I'm excited to try. And then this one's pretty new. It's by B Paper. I've never really tried this one before, but it's the B Paper Company Super Deluxe Mixed Media. Um, the paper's really thick. I like that, or it's not really thick, but it's pretty thick. I'm hoping that it will handle wet media, acrylic paints and watercolors and such. I like that it's a nice color. There's not a lot of texture, but it's not super smooth either. So I'm excited to try this one. It says they're professional series. So, um, we will see what happens and you know again i i just feel like i have way more supplies than the average person should ever have um but i'm going to spend a great deal of 2018 plowing through my materials so these are probably my favorite or most used sketchbooks and next i think we'll take a look at um like brushes and mediums and such like that All right, having a look at my brushes, mediums, things that I use pretty much on the regular. Um, having a look at my brushes here, I always tell my students, if you can only get one brush, I always, always, always use this. It's the Creative Mark Polar Flow uh, brush, and it's just the clear handled one. Um, I've had this thing for such a long time. It takes a beating and it keeps going. So this is probably, it's a 700B. This is probably my most used favorite brush because I can do um, gesso, gluing, anything, watercolors, acrylic paints. I find that this brush kind of stands up to just about any application that I'm doing. I also like to use these, um, they're Creative Mark brushes, and they're the Mimic Hog. I like these because they're nice and sturdy. They kind of like, um, the, br the bristles are pretty stiff, and they hold a lot of water, a lot of paint, and I can just literally, especially if I'm working on a canvas, um, I find that I can use these to kind of grunge in or just kind of, you know, play boss with the paints on any surface and they come in a variety of sizes um, but I like using these as well and then of course I just this is another one of the creative mark and I think they um, oh what do you call it they market these as like their student type brushes but I find that I use these for a lot as well watercolor um, acrylic painting I think I always find brushes that kind of can do a lot of things so I literally will use this a lot just for detail or splash and paint and such like that and then oh let me grab my for watercolors I love using like the Princeton Neptune or um let's see if I can find it is this another oh Creative Mark has um some of their Kalinsky brushes that I like to use um but then I also like the like the Black Velvet kinds and I don't know why mine is elusive at the moment but I do like to use those as well um, and I just can't put my my hands on them um, but that's another one of my favorite brushes remove these as far as mediums go oh and I always take care of my brushes um, I usually try to wash them out when I'm done painting but I just use this master soap I take this one with me on the go. I have the big tub that I keep in my studio um, just to kind of keep my brushes nice and clean or as clean as possible because sometimes I am pretty rough on my brushes, which is why, you know, especially this Polar Flow one, um, it's usually it goes on sale and I kind of watch for it to go on sale and I'll stock up. But at my local Jerry's Artorama during back to school, they usually put these on sale for like three dollars so I'll go ahead and buy maybe five or six um, because they're usually about eight dollars each okay so as far as 
uh, mediums and such like that go. We'll start with gesso. Um, I literally will go out and get gallons because I go through so much gesso and matte medium um, that I will get a gallon and just kind of refill the bottles. Um, so I've got this Jerry Studio acrylic um, and I I've got a gallon of that so I just kind of refill this. And then um, once I ran out of this Liquitex one, probably my most favorite gesso i just like the consistency and the price and it's let's see if i can get this in frame this is the dealer Rowney, and it's their um dealer Rowney gesso and it's just a plain white gesso however i find that i just honestly love the consistency and the coverage of this guy so i usually end up using this probably far more um but just I've kind of watched whenever things go on sale and we'll end up refilling these with um, whatever I have a gallon of. And then as far as matte mediums go, I'm going to scoot that out of the way. Again, I just put my matte medium in these ketchup squeeze bottles because it's easier to travel with. But again, I'll just kind of watch for sales and I'm almost out of this uh, gallon of the golden and that's usually what I use most often because I, I get it in gallons and I like to just put it in these squeeze bottles but I find that I just like the way that it performs I'm certain it's no different from Liquitex um, in their matte medium um, I just usually get whatever is on sale and I will refill my squeeze bottle with whatever I get from the gallon Let's talk about acrylic paints for a second. Um, I honestly think that, or I guess I should say, I don't think I've ever met an acrylic paint um, that I just really don't like. There are so many brands out there and I just find that each brand has colors that I'm attracted to or um, the consistency I just love. Um, so. So for instance, this Amsterdam has this uh, light rose that's probably one of my favorite colors from their line. So I will, whenever I run out, I usually at least refill this one because I find this one's the one that I always end up running out of. Um, and then I also, of course, use Golden in their heavy body as well as their fluid um, acrylic paints. I just, again, some of the colors that they have, um, like one of my favorites, the phthalo turquoise, the teal. Um, I just find that any of those paints I'm always using. Um, another one that I found that I'm just totally, I just really like these. These are the Sennelier Abstract Paints. Um, this orange one, it's number 615, is just one of my favorite colors from that line. Um, I truly enjoy using all of them. And I just find it depends on whatever project I'm working on. I will kind of grab whatever colors and it just doesn't depend on the brand in any way. I just find that a lot of times I'm just attracted to certain colors from certain brands. Um, I also use Matisse paints. These come in like heavy body. They also make more of a soft body. The two that I grabbed are their structure. Um, I find these at my local Jerry's Artorama um, and I just... I just like the colors and the vibrancy in these paints. So I like those a lot. Um, I also like to use Liquitex paints. They're soft body, they're heavy body. It doesn't matter. Some of those colors I just truly enjoy. I even like some of the colors in their basics line. I just end up picking up whatever I can find. Um, I will even go in and get some of the Americana or Deco Art paints. Um, Again, it's just some of the colors that I find I just like using those colors, so I'll pick those up. Um, I've even used some Holbein just for certain colors. Um, Old Holland makes some nice flesh tone colors that I like to use. And then um, I like to use some De La Rowney, like my favorites are this pistachio color from theirs. Um, but I just find that I, any brand in particular, I mean, I'm not partial to any one brand there's just different brands that have 
different pinks. And hold one second, I'm going to grab another one. How could I? I've almost forgot. Um, I always, always, and you'll usually see this Lucas Krill paints, uh, Lucas Krill Studio paints show up in a lot of my work. Um, I just love the, the color selection. This magenta is my favorite, the fluorescent. Um, I just end up using these a lot. Again, they're rel readily available at my local Jerry's Autorama. So, um, but again, I'm just, I'm not partial to any one brand. I find that with acrylic paints and as you'll see in just a second with watercolors, I end up using all different brands because they all have something that just makes me want to try them all. Next up, I will show you what I have for my watercolor. Okay, with my watercolors, first of all, let's just be real. This is a bit ridiculous. No one needs as many watercolors as I have. I find that I don't think I've ever met one that I just don't like, and I'm always looking for new ones to try. So I'm just going to talk through these really quickly as to not make this video a bajillion hours because I have so many. I'm also thinking that I will reserve another video for the handmade watercolors that I found because I'm really starting to groove on those as well. Um, let's start with what stays on my desk usually, and I try to rotate these out. This is just a Lucas pan, uh, metal pan that I have kind of tricked out. It came with the 24, but then I added a new row in the middle. Um, this, as well as this guy, usually stay on my desk like so. Um, and then this is what I use pretty much on the daily. And like I said, I try to rotate out some of my larger palettes, but um, for now, this is what's sitting on my desk. I also have um, these Prima marketing ones that I like, and I've honestly just, um, of course, done the little color swatch, but then added some colors in the middle just of, um, just to make the palettes a little more versatile for me. So I've got the Decadent Pies, uh, the Classics as well. I haven't added another row to this one yet. Um, and I just fill the rows with extra half pans and just any brand of other watercolor I have. And then, whoops, this one came apart. Um, and I think the middle row here is Turner. But again, the Pastel Dreams um, with the middle row of those tricked out. Um, I also have a couple of these little Windsor Newton little pocket sketches that I've, I've had these for such a long time and I still enjoy throwing them in my book bag to use. Um, another one that I found that I really like is the Create a Color and these are just the Aqua Bricks. Um, it's got a little sponge and then just 12 bricks. And again, I like to throw this in my book bag sometimes and in a minute I'm going to cause an avalanche because there's so many. I have this Van Gogh set that I like. Um, it's just the standard palette, but I do like to throw that one in my book bag. Um, a lot of these, oops, I found the Tropicals from the uh, Prima that I use as well, or that I like, and I've started adding a different row here in the middle. Um, I've got a Jean Davenport one that I like to use. This one's her Bright palette, um, and I've, again, started with I'm going to add another row here in the middle just to make them a little more versatile or change them up a little bit. Um, I've got this Sennelier little pocket one that, again, it just kind of goes in my book bag. I've added another row. I don't know what my deal is with not using them as they are, but adding more colors to them. I think it's because I have so many tubes of watercolor. Um, and then this guy usually stays in my studio but it's the Sennelier it's the 48 half pan um one that I use often maybe not as much as I should and a lot of these you'll see that I don't I guess again this year I'm going to make it a point to start using more of my supplies but I've got this one and then I've got another um this was an old Daniel Smith palette that I've had for I don't even know if they sell these uh, travel tins anymore but these are all my Daniel Smith paints and I've got a few of their newer 
think these were their new colors for 2017 that I just put out here in the lid. Um, so I like to pull that one out and play with that one often. And I've got another little smaller Sennelier tin, um, just the standard one with the different colors. Again, it's not used as often as it should, and that's totally my fault. Um, I also like to play with, and I just, not really just discovered, um, but I'm just intrigued by the Schmincke that I've never really tried before. So I just bought a small set of these. Um, it, it came as this, this top row, and then I've added some more colors down here to the bottom. And I need to update this little card, but I haven't done that yet. And then, of course, in my true Ophelia-ness, I saw online somewhere this Schmincke, it's the Academy line. So, of course, I had to go out and get this one, and it's just the top row of their 12 colors, 2, 4, 6, 8, yep, 12 colors. Um, and I enjoy playing with this one. I usually throw that one in my book bag. And then, um, this one is the White Knights. It's a, uh, I'm sorry, this one's a Yarka, and it's by Jack Richeson. And again, it's one of those that I've hardly touched and played with yet, and I'm going to make it a point to do so but um I don't even remember why I had to have this one or I think I might have seen somebody using it and I apologize if you guys can hear my dog downstairs because they're all downstairs going a little bit crazy I'm gonna move some of these out of the way and um carry on with part two of some more of my larger palette all right carrying on with my watercolors this one's just one of those I found this it's an angora watercolor set that I found in, again, my local Jerry's Artorama, and I think it was even in the kids section, but I honestly enjoy using these colors just to um, lay down color. Even I find that my grocery list looks better in color. Um, I've got a palette here with some golden in it, and I always end up making a little cheat sheet or color swatch, um, but these are just a couple of golden colors that I wanted in a palette. And then I think somewhere we'll, we'll just keep going I've got this mission gold um, set of paints here and again I just need to do a better job at using my colors or using the paints that I have but um, I just I like their colors from watercolors a lot or their watercolors a lot I've got this um, set of Holbein that I like to use and of course the larger palettes end up staying in my studio a lot here's the color cheat sheet that I made and these are the paints and I've had this set for quite a while I usually try to at least mark the date when I put them together but I guess I've not done so well I've got another selection and this is wild but um, some more Daniel Smith paints um, and this one literally will sit on my desk or sometimes it travels with me depending on how long I'm gonna be gone um, another mission gold and this one's a mystery palette because I did not write the names down so this one's just a variety of paints that are in this palette and I've got two Winsor Newton palettes and this is just all the colors that I selected from the line and maybe I should move some of these so that we can at least take a peek in it um, but these were just some of the paints that um, from the line I selected whoops Let's fix all of this back. Now I'm coming apart. But, um, got wires everywhere. Come on, Ophelia, get your life together here. Um, but these are just some of the colors that I selected from the line that I thought I would enjoy. So I've got them marked as palette one. And here is palette two, more of like moving into the greens and such like that. Um, I found last year M. Graham for the first time and I totally went all out and grooved on this so I just put together a small palette of their colors and let's see what else I have here I found this little it's an aquafine by Dale Rowney I like playing around with this one and this of course stays in my book bag or um, I should say I throw it in my book bag um, just whenever I'm going out I usually um, just end up playing with them but then again I don't play with them as much as I should um, I've got another one of these Lucas 
like my smaller one that I keep on my desk. Um, this one's the 48 set. Um, and again, sometimes I will end up just putting out different, and I think these may be Daniel Smith colors, um, just to add some variety, or maybe I was just trying them out, but this one's that 48 half pan Lucas. And just a couple more here, and we are done with watercolors because this is a bit ridiculous. Um, I've got this Windsor Newton set, and let's see if I can remember even how to open it. Um, it's their, these are the full pans, and with a brush inside, um, clearly, I've not even used it, but I'm planning to change that. I've got another Daniel Smith from, I think I put this together in 2017, just with a variety of colors. I tell you, I don't think I've just ever met a watercolor paint that I don't like. Another M. Graham watercolor set that I put together and just left these blank until I could find more that I would want to use. And then this guy is a Mamari Blue, and this is one of the ones from way back that I bought. It's their 48 half pan set, and it looks like that. I've used it, and I probably have had this thing for maybe seven or eight years. Um, again, I'm going to do a better job at using what I have. Those are the majority of my, um, I should say, like, store bought names not the handmaids that we'll just cover in a separate video because it's just too much i just realized i can't put my hands on i have one by holbein it's their little palm pocket one that i really like to use and i also have a koi watercolor one that i can't quite find or put my hands on but i'll find those as for gouache oh this is kind of big but let's just see if i can show you I just literally will use whatever they have in store. Um, again, haven't really done a good job at using it because clearly this is, it looks brand new, but um, I promise, I totally promise I'm gonna change all that. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up and come back with the very last snippets of just what I use. I'll be right back. All right, I've tried to grab as much as I could so that we could go ahead and rein this 758 million hour video in. Um, having a look at my stencils, I usually just use pretty much anything, again, that I can find, and I will go online. Um, I've liked my local Jerry's Artorama started carrying these Marabou stencils, so I've got these in a variety of sizes that I like to use. Um, crafters workshop or um yeah this one's a crafters workshop that you've seen me use in a previous video i like those stencil girl i like i just don't can't put my hands on any of them um donna downey i like using her stencils uh just again like i said and i don't have a loyalty or a favorite with any of them i just a quick google search of stencils and you'll come up with all kinds um, in a lot of my videos, when you've seen me prep my pages, I've used just a variety of ephemera and of course the shameless plug here, but on my Etsy shop, I sell collage packs and I like to use these just in my, um, either it's prepping my pages with some dictionary pages and such like that. But these bags come filled literally with all kinds of things from old, uh, ledger books pieces, um, just a variety of things to kind of use to glue down. Even there are um, collage sheets that I never ended up using, um, old handwritten letters that I've gotten and color copied and such like that. Um, but those are available in my Etsy shop if you're ever, ever interested in purchasing one of those. But I literally, literally just like to use these to have other elements to glue down. Um, speaking of collage, I also like to use and again some of my favorite collage sheets are for instance Robin Marie Smith makes these really cool um, art pops that I like to use and if you just google her name she's got her web store open which is where I usually find them um, Tiffany over at Southern Gal Designs also makes some really cool cool collage sheets that I end up buying this one's another Robin Marie Smith um, and then Tisha Moore also makes some really cool. I just love her elements that 
a lot of times they're just pretty weird so I like to use those a lot in my work um, but those are the collage sheets I use as far as inks go um, I like to use Liquitex inks or um, FW makes good inks I use these interchangeably uh, as far as acrylic acrylic inks go I will end up you know using them flat out of the bottle to paint with or with my dip pen and nib um, let's see if I can find that guy probably oh here it is um, my dip pen and nib this is what I use and I literally will just like dunk it right into the bottle and um, write with or such such like that or use a paintbrush to paint with but then I also find that I like to put them in these spray bottles um, and in a spray bottle I even have a Soho brand that I pick up at my art supply store um, that I just fill the spray bottle with to even spray over the stencils that I use so I like using those um, I also like these they're the PH Martin's watercolors um, the radiant concentrated watercolors I like to use these to play around with with uh, watercolors as far as um, other materials I have um, just water soluble or like watercolor pencils and um, I gosh again way too many art supplies but I like using the Derwent ink tints a lot Prismacolor makes a nice um, watercolor pencil and I find that I just pick through these these two interchangeably um, Faber-Castell also has a nice one um, and then probably the the next most used is the Derwent Graphitint I like to use those a lot and I mean no surprise I like to use these um, Caran d'Ache what do you call them Neo color twos I find that I end up using these a lot and I just I broke the bigger tin that I have so I just kind of keep them in this box um, other things that I use would be just plain uh, colored pencils I use Prismacolor and Faber Castell and then Derwent of course I love using this Jerry's Jumbo Jet black pencil from Jerry's Artorama I like this one because of its nice dark mark um, I like these Tombow and I think they're called erotogen color pencils um, just a plain 2B pencil is what I use for writing a lot of the time um, acrylic markers Amsterdam makes good ones Liquitex makes nice ones um, Pebeo makes these nice for artist markers that I like I also like to use these Faber-Castell pit pins the bigger size as well as um, the smaller size ones the smaller nib ones I should say um, and then just another one I also like to use those Faber-Castells as well as these um, they're called accurate that I find at Jerry's Artorama they're waterproof so I like to use those in my work and if you stuck around here this long I sure appreciate you watching I know I have a lot of art supplies which means that I've got a lot of arting to do in 2018 so that I can use all of this stuff up thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time bye